Have you been bit? I said, have you been bit? Well, get in here then. <sighs> well, I'm glad you're not dead. Welcome to the guild. Wow. You know, I thought you were completely gone. You, you'd started to go, uh, you'd started to, you know, crave brains. And I mean, you had in your pre-apocalypse days, but, you know, a lack of education is a thing. But, but you're looking, you're looking I mean, a little bit green around the gills, but you're, you're looking good. I, I would say this zombie infection is possibly the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's, it's, oh, please. It's, 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 it's cleared up my eczema for a start. Right. Um, yeah. Um, I've lost a lot of weight. Um, because because it's because when you're chasing people for brains, um, you have to get quite a lot of exercise before you actually get your food. Are you a slow zombie or are you a quick zombie? Well, this is it. Are you what? I think the only difference between see being an insider, it's really useful to know because you start off a slow zombie, but as you get used to, you know, your, your muscles free up and you get a bit of exercise, right. you speed up. So I'm not I'm not a fast zombie yet. I'm more of a kind of. Um, Lolloping zombie. That's what we like to call it in the in the in the trade. Oh, is that is, is that sort of insider talk? You're yeah, a lolloper. Yeah, yeah, really. I shouldn't be telling you the things because you're only allowed to do it if you're in the special Discord channel. But but yeah, lolloping zombie is kind of midpoint between shambling zombie and jogging zombie. You um, know what's insane though? The you know the entire society has collapsed. There's there's no telephone lines, there's no yeah. internet, and yet Discord still survives. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It is They're amazing. Like cockroaches, Discord and cockroaches. Who the fuck knew? Discord, cockroaches, and board game podcasters. They're just they're just they're just so ubiquitous um, these days. Ubiquitous is the word. I mean, there is the zombie plague, yeah. and then there's the content plague. Yes, the content creator plague, um, where where eh, yes. Everyone has a podcast, Ben. Everyone has a podcast. Um, there, there's actually some specialist zombie podcasts which are, are worth subscribing to. Oh, really? What are yeah. they called? Well, so you're a zombie now. That's good for okay, your, your, yeah. your gateway zombieing. Um, uh, I zombie. That's for your kind of tech savvy zombies. Ah, so uh, I did hear one that was. Um, what was it called again? Uh, yeah, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. That's for your more right wing zombies. Um, that one, the one, the ones. That oh, is, is that is that like the four chan of yeah. zombie podcasts? <laughs> that's it. That's when you talk around. Talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I won't go into quite what they discuss there, but it, but it's not good. Let me put it that way. It's not good. Well, I mean, don't be a purple zombie in a room with them. Is what I'm saying. Well, that's probably right. Yes, and and uh, they're, they're always on about red pills and all that kind of stuff. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a grim scene there. I wouldn't and, advise. And- and don't they realise that it was the bloody red pills that started the plague to begin with? Exactly. Exactly. No, they don't. They don't. They're completely not self-aware, Ben. Um, anyway, I, I don't know if you. I don't know if you realise it. I've, I uh, saved a segue uh, yes. from the uh, from society, and I go around the compound uh-huh. and I ask people questions. And mostly I get quizzical looks because you know we're dying out here. But yeah, I ask yeah. them questions about board games. Well, why not? Why not? And, uh, well, I mean. I could be doing more constructive things like growing food, treating the sick. We could all be doing more constructive things, Ben, but yet here you and I are <laughs> speaking to each other. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yes. And so the question I was asking this week was, are modern games too complex? Mm-hmm. I got quite a few fuck-offs. Mm-hmm. I got a few, kill me, kill me. Yeah. But a few people hanging around the compound... They, they weighed in. But I thought, you know, the reason I, I was asking this question is because I knew I was going to bump into you into the, mm-hmm. in, in the mm-hmm. guild. I was, I was there uh, at the gates, scraw- clawing at the gates. I mean, how you got in, I don't understand. But anyway, and what I'm interested, what's really interesting is that you're drinking a mojito. I, I which was. Is, I've, I've finished that. that was, it was, it was, is it, what was mojito? Is it, what, what, what nationality is that? Is it Mexican, a mojito? Brazilian. Brazilian. It was Brazilian courage to, to come and talk to you, uh, Ben. That's exactly. What it was. I mean, yeah. I understand, you know, I'm, I, as every celebrity in the world was wiped out, mm-hmm. I'm currently the most famous person in the world. You so are. I understand it was quite intimidating. But the reason I asked you on this was that we've had this discussion before. And I remember before, in the good times, when we were out in Yorkshire, between me 
vomiting and <laughs> getting to your place. Mm -hmm. We were talking about, you were talking about the old Euros. Mm -hmm. The Wolfgang Kramers, the Reiner Knizias. The Reiner These Knizias, Euros yes. that seem to be supple and without any sort of fat. And you were sort of bemoaning, I don't know, how complex modern Euro games are. I mean, what what is your opinion on this sort of thing? Um, it, it's difficult um, because I'm an old man. Um, and, and as an old man, I will always say things were better in the old days, even when I wasn't around in the old days of board gaming. Um, but as I have matured and grown into the hobby, I've, I've, gone, I've gone through various in incarnations, you know, gateway games initially, very excited, then the buy everything games, and then the heavy Euros are the, the only ones really worth playing phase. And and this this entire conversation is going to have to be, you know, a disclaimer about being just about personal preference and personal opinion because because you know these are subjective opinions. However, I also believe my opinions are true and right, and so therefore I will I will I will argue them. Way to way to contradict that disclaimer the minute it came out of your mouth. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. These, these are all subjective, but they're also objectively the correct ones. Um, it feels to me that increasingly within the board game kind of sphere, designers are choosing to bolt on more complexity and say it's weight. Um, the, the, the one that really springs to mind is Feudum. I don't know if you've ever played Feudum. It's that really well, attractive-looking kind of Adventure Time-looking game. Yeah, I did a live stream for the Compound earlier. Right. Where I... You know, project myself on the bed sheet that they've got in the mm -hmm. rec mm -hmm. room, and I was talking about this because I was listening to a podcast, and they were saying, "I think feudum is the sort of poster child for Kickstarter excess, right?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that it just seems I haven't played it, but they were talking about it in the description. It seems violently fiddly, and Euro games should be about efficiency, right? Yeah, yeah, and and and. Feudum is three really quite good games all played simultaneously. Um, and that is what I find with a lot of these games. Even Great Western Trail, I would argue, is two quite good games played simultaneously. And and this this added complexity, and, and, and Lisboa as well, um, all these really fiddly bits that you have to juggle, the plate spinning that you have to juggle all at the same time, is detracts from the experience for me. Um, it, it means that you have to completely focus your entire mind on the game. You can't take in anyone around you. There's there's no social interaction because you you are trying to work out what you're doing. I find the the planning gets now. This could all because of because of my mental deficiency as well, especially after the zombie infection. You know, the bite. The bite. Yeah, my my cognitive powers may not be quite up to what they they used to be, but but. I find it hard to plan. The, the games I really love, the heavier games I really love, is when I'm planning <laughs> four or five turns down the line and going, right, if I want to get to that point, then I'm going to have to do this, this, and this. Um, Nippon, which is a game we've, we've, we've talked about before, that, that's what I really like about that. And Nippon is quite a complex game. But games where it, they just pile on all the choices and pile on all the different tracks and the different ac actions you have to do and and you know you can go over to this board and do that it means that it's so complicated the variables are so swingy that you can't even plan for what you're going to do or i certainly can't plan for because i don't know where the game state's going to be there so so it's, it ends up being these heavy games are very tactical because you've got no way of strategizing because you don't right. know where it's going um I and, and I think that's an issue. I think, you know, there is a huge board with 100 tracks is very beguiling. Yeah. But fundamentally, it leaves me cold. And this leads on to uh, Anthony Boydell, who I popped to see in the infirmary the other day. Mm -hmm. And he's actually picking up. I think, I think he's one of yours now. Oh, but right. Very good. 
I'll, I'll, I'll but, direct him to know, the, the appropriate podcasts. Yeah. I don't think any of the important bits have dropped off. But he talks here, it says, it seems that adding a thick, swollen layer of blubber is required to make it a heavy, non-trivial game. Mm-hmm. And then he looks at titty-whacking the Incan pyramids of dull hell, yes. which makes a nice premise of dice promotion and turns it into a bubbling, turgid gumbo of just about everything. Mm-hmm. And I played that game, and it was joyless for me. Mm -hmm. It felt utterly without... Whereas I really liked Tolkien by the same people, Mm -hmm. but this felt like they'd added just an extra bit, and it had distracted them from what the core of the game is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a... a, I haven't played that one, but but I looked at it on the table and thought... Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, and everyone, a lot of people I know, have said it, it's great. You know, Matthew Jude says it's great. My friend Mike says it's great. But, um, but I, th- but I think, and again, this is all due to my personal preference on games. But um, the somewhat the elegance and and the, the the kind of simple sophistication of of board gaming is lost when you you have all these 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 every nut and bolt. Things in there, um, you lose some of the the beauty of a board game, and it becomes much more of a, I don't know, a, a piece of. It's not even a piece of clockwork because the, it becomes more of a, a, a cuckoo clock where there's something coming out, going cuckoo, cuckoo, distracting you from what the actual purpose of the clock is, which is telling the time. I mean, look at Blue Lagoon, right? We played Blue Lagoon. Yeah. Is there is there a more delightful, efficient? Elegance. I mean, if you want to look at the word elegant, I mean, it's, for me, elegance is that you have a singular thing that you do, and from that, complexity just blossoms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And look at Blue Lagoon. You add a piece to a board, mm-hmm. and yet the game is hugely deep in terms of what you need to do to win, right? Yeah, yeah. Um and you know, taken to extremes, that doesn't work for me either. Like chess, chess is a fine game. You can explain the rules in a, in a, in, a, in two minutes. Yet you can be playing it for your lifetime and never master it. You know, that's that's a very elegant game. Uh, but that's not the game for me. I, I need more bells and whistles than that. Um, but the thing that rankles me sometimes is that, and it's not with everybody, and I'm not accusing anybody of doing this, um, but. <laughs> But there can be a very much an attitude amongst proper gamers, you know, gatekeepery gamers, that Blue Lagoon is a light filler game to play before you get stuck into Feudum or Lisboa or Feast for Odin or something like that. You know, a proper game with proper meat on its bones, and this is this is where the true value is. And for me, um, it, it is it can be enjoyable playing one of those very complex games. Um, but they're they're just not as beautiful. They're just not as satisfying and rounded an experience for me um, as something nice and pure and simple like Ra, like modern right. art, like like um, like bloody Reiner Knizia, like Reiner Knizia, yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 as Reiner Knizia went out of fashion, these 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 heavier games rose and rose. It felt. I'm not saying Reiner Knizia is the only person who did it, but he's he's almost your poster child of you your two-page rule book, and, and then suddenly you go, wow, look at all this stuff that's in here. Um, as, as these these games... Because there has been a rise. I mean, somebody in the guild very helpfully linked to that um, study that was, was read out at Aircon, this this investigation, the data mining of um, Board Game Geek. And there has been a rise in complexity um, of board games over the years, uh, and, and over the last two years, it, it's it's risen to... Now the, the, games, the games that are released, they're com- more complex... On average, according to the Board Game Geek heaviness rating scale or whatever it is, than anyone's before. Um, so there is a rising complexity, and and part of me thinks that's probably because there's nothing new. You know, <laughs> the designers have, have plumbed the depths. I'm not saying there's nothing new, but they've plumbed the depths, and most of the easy, elegant games have been made. I suspect. I mean, I'm no designer, but it feels that way. Well, and now well, that they- goes on to what. Um, the zombie who came in with you, mm-hmm. Mischip, Mischip, Mike, Mike Paul. I'm not rude. I'm not rude enough to call him a pillock. <laughs> I think. I think. I think it's very unfair. Mike the pillock pool is. is, is he's changed that by uh, Deep Pole now. Uh, oh really? Is that- yeah, yeah. He's, he's his new middle name. Yeah. And so he says, 
As designs get increasingly more iterative, then the USP of more modern games seems to be differentiation, i.e. combining several pre-existing mechanisms into something new, rather than the introduction of one solid, completely new mechanism. Mm. Do you think games, and especially these sort of heavy Euros, are becoming more derivative? It feels that way to me, but then again, that could be because of my age as a gamer. You know, I've been in it for seven, eight, nine years. Um, I say seven, eight, nine years because I don't want to sound like I'm experienced. Seven years is what I've been. <laughs> seven years. Um, I've been in it seven years, and and it all seems it all seems derivative at this point to me. To, to stuff that I, I saw before, and I think probably because it possibly is, but then again, it probably was seven years ago when I was first when I was first getting in. Um, it definitely feels like we're seeing the same thing over and over again um and especially with these heavier games it doesn't feel like they're particularly different to each other these 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 soulless euros don't feel like they're massively different to each other just like the soulless dungeon crawlers don't feel like they're massively different to each other once you've got one do you need another you know do you need another one I, i'm not convinced you do um they would very much like you to buy more obviously in the industry um yeah, I, I think I think it's a it's a symptom of of needing to mash together um, mash together mecha- mechanisms and and things like that. Yeah, the thing is, it's really interesting. I, I think game you referred to earlier. It I, I I think what makes some heavy games really great and some heavy games really by the by is this idea of originality. So if you look at Nippon. Mm-hmm. The way that sort of worker allocation mechanic mm-hmm. is fantastic, and that's mm-hmm. the core of the game. Managing that is the core of the game, and everything else comes out from that. And that makes that game really interesting, really exciting, and makes it feel innovative. And yet, if you look at later Uwe Rosenberg stuff... yeah. Well, Fist it's, Rodin is is, right. is is a is a mess. I'll uh, whack be- the Tetris stuff in, or whack the worker placement stuff yeah. in, and we'll see if it works, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and and you know, and and even with Feudum, Feudum has got a really interesting. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but really interesting mechanism up at the top. I call it because that's where it was when I was playing right. it, uh, where you 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 trying to court the favour of various people and things like that. And that was a really good medium-heavy game in itself. And then you've got another board with another game on it, basically. Right. Which completely distracts from the, the nice thing that's going on up there. So so with, with Nippon, it all, all the extra bits feed into that central yeah. worker selection thing. And it all feels into it. In, I suppose what I'm really saying... When it boils down to it, is games have started not to feel intuitive to me. Whereas the heavier the game gets, and the, well, no, that's not true. The more complex the game gets, the less in- intuitive it is. Um, well, I think it's the big difference between complicated and complex, right? Yeah, yeah. Complicated is loads of stuff. Complex is an interesting puzzle to solve. Is depth, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so complicated. The more complicated something gets, the less intuitive it gets, um, and the less it feels like you're playing the game and the more it feels like you're trying to work the game out. Um, and and many people love puzzles, and if you love a puzzle, then I can see how these, these complicated games are interesting. Um, but I like, to, I, like to, I like to feel the game, and it right. feels like I don't feel... The game's guts. If I'm too busy working out what that track does on Lisboa, that there's a track on Lisboa which I hate, and it's this. This have you played Lisboa? I played it once, and actually, if I'm honest, I didn't find it at all complicated because I'm a very simple person. I just focused on one thing and went through it. And that's probably the way to do it, to be honest. But there's a there's a track where the the currency value goes up and down, um, and it can stop you doing something you've been planning to do. Um, and I'm sure that's why it's put in there, but it goes up and down almost at the whims of the gods. Um, it certainly didn't go up and down at the whims of the players. Uh, there are actions the players do that, that influence it, but they, they they were kind of by the by because they were doing something else. I'm, I'm sure if you played it 700 times, you, you would be able to 
play it like a violin, but we were just playing it like a tuba. Um, so, um, so, and that, that track just stopped me doing things. And it's just like, but no, because it's too complicated to, to need to have another factor into this. But again, this is all my personal, you know, I, I do appreciate that some people love games. Like I've got friends who love it, friends I respect who, who love Lisboa, but it's just, oh. For me, for me too, I, I like to be surprised by elegance. Mm -hmm. So, um, how the hell he got into the compound, I do not know. But this is Andrew Wadsworth. Andrew Wadsworth Bod. Bod. Yeah, well, he, he's, he's, um, he's actually dropped the bod post-apocalypse because he's hoping no one will remember who he was <laughs> in the real world. I'm not surprised. I'm not but surprised. he says something that's reasonably, reasonably educated, mm -hmm. which is adding unnecessary layers to a game doesn't make it complex. It makes it cluttered. Give me a streamlined game with a depth of strategy any day. And I think that's what we're saying, yes. right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, um, and there are there are streamlined games out there which which work, um, but um, but but there, there is a tendency for more and more and, and the, the kind of the as I say the, the elitism of the heavier and heavier. I mean, if you take Wingspan, I don't know if you've played. Have you played Wingspan I have, yet? Yeah. That's been touted as a fantastic gateway game. And that's not a gateway game, in my view. That is a no, quite a, that is. is a very complex game. Ultimately, you've got a number of different things on the cards. Some of which uh, are taken into account in certain situations. Some of which aren't. So you've got to kind of uh, translate what what things you're going to use. There's loads of different moving parts. It is it's a medium game. I'm not saying it's heavy, but the fact that the 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 community think that is a gateway game. Um, now, any game can be a gateway game. Lisboa can be a gateway game. If you explain right. the rules well enough and you, you, the person's going to pick it up, then that's absolutely fine. But the way people use gateway games are for people who are a bit nervous about games, don't quite know, you know, they, they need a very gentle introduction and then, and, then, and then you can open the world up to them. Um, and for that, it doesn't, doesn't work. It's a, it's a medium game. But, but the, the community's tolerance for complexity... Um, has blinded us a little bit to how complicated some of these games can be to to an outsider. I would say, um, because they are complicated. I mean, I read a blog post somewhere that someone tried to play Wingspan with their in-laws mm -hmm. because the dad was a twitcher, right? And so they thought, oh, he's going to love this because he bird watches, and they mm -hmm. sort of sat there for the entire time, sort of going, oh, "What the hell am I doing?" You know, mm. and and you see this thing when it's so Wingspan was on Radio Four. And I know people rolled their eyes, but there was this inevitable thing saying the rules are really complex here. Mm -hmm. And then this is the point. If you take a hobby game to someone who's not used to hobby games, they will find the rules really complex. They and will. I think we do lose sight of that, right? I, 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 th I think so. Um, and because they are complex, you know, they, if you need to sit down for half an hour before you play it to be told the rules, then they're complicated rules. I don't. Right. I mean,. I got taught it very well, but but it still took me a turn or two to get my head around it. Now, most people, the, the people I work with, my colleagues, are very intelligent people. But if they're taking a couple of turns to get their head around what's going on, then they're they're going to give up. You know, they're going to they're going to I can't do this. You know, this is boring, and 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 move on. Um, and they'd be quite right to do so because they they haven't got the experience. Um, that things will get better, if that makes any sense. The thing is, I'm a grumpy old twat as well. Yes. And I went through that phase when I started gaming. You know, when you first start and you're super enthusiastic and it's the only thing that consumes your mind. And I had gamer friends and then I had non-gamer friends. Mm -hmm. And I tried that tragic thing of trying to get my non-gamer friends to mix with my gamer friends and to make them into... Gamers, and of course, mm -hmm. inevitably, they didn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. They were just interested in other stuff, right? And I think part of it is this. I mean, the point is, Wingspan isn't complex when you really want to sit down and learn how to play Wingspan. Yeah. yeah. My second or third game was Trajan, right? Mm hmm. And Trajan's objectively a hard game, and it was just because I was really bloody into it that I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah push myself into learning that game, you know. I, th I think it's all about motivation, isn't it? If, if, if you are motivated to learn a game, which, which we all are, because we know what the end results can be is a really satisfying game, then 
then yes, it's a gateway game. But if you're not motivated and you're doing it because, all right, I'll do it to humour him, then right. that's, that, that is not the one to start with. Because you don't have tolerance. You just don't have tolerance for complexity at that point, no, right? No, exactly. And you're gonna, your mind's going to wander. You're not going to listen to the rules properly. Um, if, if the rules can't be explained within two minutes on, on many of these games, they're, they're, they're a goner for me. Um, not that, I mean, I don't go around trying to convert people because... Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm far too tired to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, my gamer friends are the people who already play games generally. Right. Um, uh, I don't, you know, people have to come to it willingly rather than me push push it onto them. Um, but yeah, it's it's yeah that that was a, a little bit of a, of a diversion, wasn't it? But 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 yeah, I, th- I think I think we, there's an underestimate underestimation that's not a word that's 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 a hell of a word it is, is, that, is that one of your secret secret zombie words that's true it is it is that's the that is my uh my um oh man i was gonna come up with a really clever uh psychological word for for when you get your your anomia maybe that's not the right word but still um that's that's my my, my zombie adult brain um coming out yeah i don't know what i'm gonna say now so go. we'll move on then to Dean Liggett, <laughs> who's Storm Chaser. Storm I wonder, Chaser. I wonder if he really is a Storm Chaser. I wonder if he's like one of those guys in Twister, Philip yeah, Seymour Hoffman. I think he, he, I think he is. I think he's. Although I, I think he's a, a bit of a cowardly one. So he just he's a more of a drizzle. When it starts drizzling. drizzle chaser. Yeah, yeah you go, I'll go over there. I'll get mildly damp. <laughs> get mildly damp over there. That's it. Oh, there's a puddle forming over here. It's getting a bit ripe. I'm off. I've got. I've got a camera. I'm going to take a picture <laughs> and then I'm going to leg it from this puddle. <laughs> so he says, you know, he gets jealous of people who are experiencing the joy of discovering the hobby and experiencing unfamiliar genres and mechanisms for the first time. And as he, tr- as I try to relieve that high, I get sucked into the darkness. There's the cult of the new. Mm. And I remember that first three, four months of getting mm. into gaming where everything was brilliant, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you ever feel that anymore? No. No? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I, I, re- I remember that first, well, yeah, three to six months where if there was a games night going on and for some reason I couldn't go, I was madly jealous. Right. Madly jealous. Um, and would move heaven and earth to be able to go along on a Friday, you know, um, to, to my friend's house to play games and, and and just consumed everything. And now I'm 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 a jaded, bitter old cynic. Crystal was talking about gamers turning to cynical, cynical, grumpy people, and I'm definitely a cynical, grumpy old man when it comes to gaming. Um, I, I definitely have games that that I like, and on first play I go, oh, that was really quite good. But I don't think I've ever had the same thrill as the the first time I played Carcassonne. I get warmth now rather than thrill. Yes. I get that feeling. Like, there was this one time we played Concordia. Mm -hmm. And all four of us, we finished the game and we just all stood up from the table. And we stood there for sort of 30 seconds in quiet contemplation, just looking at Mm. the board. Because we all just felt so utterly gratified at what we'd just done for two hours. Very nice. Yeah, Very nice. it was it was fantastic. And that's rare, but but it happens. And I think I think that's that's what I get now. Much more than that sort of <gasps> I, I describe games as nourishing now rather than right. rather than exciting. For sure. Um I, I am still enthusiastic about the hobby, but but I find it a nourishing place to be rather than rather than thrilling um and that's because you've seen most of it before you've just seen most of it before there's, there's very little out there that is new um i mean do you, do you do you have mo- i mean you must i guess i was speaking to someone the other day and we were talking about it uh, we were talking about something and i said well the thing is you know i'm kind of I'm kind of all right with gamers. I kind of understand gamers, and I quite like them. And they said, but six months ago, you were saying that you fucking hated everyone who plays games, and they're all scumbags. And I said, yeah, because I was going through a phase in which I really bloody hated it. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you go through that phase where you're sort oh, of definitely. Like, I hate this thing, and I don't want to do it anymore? Yeah, I do. I get, I, do, <clears throat> I get fed up of a, a number of different things, because I'm a very grumpy man. I get fed up of the, um, the hype. Um, that's 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 very much where I am currently. Actually, very much fed up with the industry, and, and everyone saying we must grow the hobby and all this this relentless 
push for consumerism, which um, which really frustrates me. I get fed up of the self righteousness of the community on the online right. community. Um, I listened I to get- a podcast the other day, and and someone said in it, you know, real people don't. Real people aren't on Twitter, and I thought that's right. It's absolutely right. It is right, and it's yeah. It's something that I have to remind myself of. Uh, you know, these, these aren't. I mean, obviously, real people, but this isn't. This isn't society. I'm looking. And at And this here. is not how they are no. in any situation. If you're in the same room as them, right? No, no, no. That that's that's very true. Um, and I, I get fed up of my game group at times, um, and 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 want to retreat into a, a select few members who I know I really get on with as, as as friends as well as fellow gamers because you know there is a differential there yeah um but I've never really got fed up of actually playing a game I don't think I don't think I've ever got fed up of playing games I've right. just got fed up of the the people around them um, I've got fed up with types of games right yeah and actually yeah. my it's interesting we were talking about this my latest phase because I've got a friend who used to play sort of um, Avalon Hill war games in the mm-hmm. 90s. So all of these heavy Euros for him are super simple, right? Mm-hmm. And he just wants to play heavy, heavy games all the time. So I'm going through a phase of, I, you know, frankly, I don't want to sit around for 45 minutes learning the bloody rules before I sit mm-hmm. down. You know, I want something that offers me depth without offering me complexity, you know. Uh, the, the, the greatest treat as a gamer is sitting down at a game table where everybody on the table knows the rules and then just opening the box and starting. Oh, it never happens, does it? It's it's it, it really is the 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 custard cream of gaming. <laughs> it, it is, it is. It's amazing. It happened to me a few times. It happens more when you're just playing with one person. Right. Um, but but yeah, that 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 you know, four of you sit down. We all know how to play, don't we? Yeah. Right. First. Turn. It's like, oh man. I, I have, oh, a, I have man. a couple of friends from Manchesterford, and they lived in Berlin, and they were great. We'd play three players because three players is the best number of players for Eurogames. They were husband and wife, and we'd play games that we knew, mm. and it was so great. And then they moved to Bloody Island, so we don't do that anymore. <sighs> Selfish. So going on right. to Zuxi, yeah, and. Right, I believe you knew them before the fall, so you're going to help me pronounce their name. Oh, this is blimey, I don't even know who that is. Yanni Kontkarnen. <laughs> oh, Yanni. <laughs> I am notorious for not... Peter Peloton on the Twitter. I am, I, am, I am notorious for not being able to pronounce his name. Uh, Come on, then, give us a go. It, Maybe... It's Yanni. Yeah, it's Yanni, I think. Is it Yanni, is it? Yanni, I think. He's, he's, a, a, he's a Finnish gentleman. He is indeed. I mean, Finland never existed. You should read the Reddit page, and it certainly doesn't exist after the bomb dropped on it. Exactly. But he says, this is really interesting, he he sort of says there's a balance in that games are becoming more convoluted, is what he says, but rules are becoming clearer. Mm. Do you think that's true? I think it probably is true. I think there is a there is an intolerance of bad rule books um, now. I'm not saying it always is true. I've just got the Batman uh, Gotham City Chronicles or whatever it's called. And, and is it dreadful? Is... Are the rules dreadful? No, the rules are dreadful if you don't know how to play. The rules are fantastic if you do know how to play. Right. They're they're a fantastic reference book. They're not a very good novel. Is is basically um, um, what they are. But 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 there are, there are. Um, Yes, I would say there is an intolerance now of, of poor rule books. Um, there is more of a, a movement towards good rule books. Occasionally, you do get the bad rule books. So I would say generally he's he's correct. I rarely these days read a rule book because I've thinned my collection down to to, to pittance um, and leech off my friends. Are you are you um, one of these scumbags that gets other people to read the rule books? I am. Yeah. God, I wish I could do that. I wish I could be that person. <laughs> <laughs> it's very useful. It's very useful. I the only... really, if there's something, the one thing about gaming I detest more than anything is yeah. reading bloody rule books. I find well, those people who talk about, oh, I've got them on my bedside table yeah. and I read them before I go to sleep. I mean, my God, how do you do it so dull? <laughs> I have a friend, um, he may or may not be a pillock, who not only reads them for bedtime reading, but he also, for fun, uh, summarizes them into. 
rule sheets and cheat sheets in order to help help learn them. Uh, and, and sometimes publishes them on Board Game Geek for the betterment of all mankind. He is a uh, better man than both of us. He is, and he's a very useful man to be playing games with because he will whip out his little sheet yeah. and, then, um, and then teach you the rules. It's fantastic. Yeah. So, just one more then before we go. And uh, this is someone I, I had a drink with in the Guild a couple of weeks ago. And I think you knew him before... I know, I know, I've known everybody on this list so yeah, far. Before you were bit. And that's uh, yeah. Matthew Jude Cooper. No, I'm not sure about no? him. No? No. I think he, he mentioned last time that we were con- contractually obliged not to acknowledge each other's existence. Is he, uh, was, he, was he stalking you before the fall? This is what I, I reckon. What he tends to do... He has been bit. What he tends to do is follow me around, just pick up things as I drop them and, and claim them as his own. That's what he tends to do. He's not going to like that at all. He's not going to like me saying that at all. So he says essentially <laughs> there are just more games. Yes. Is that the fact? Because when I think about it, when actually you think about it, there's loads of simple games too. And there's loads yeah, yeah. of medium weight games and there's loads of heavy games. I guess it's just yeah. a product of more games being published now. That it's a product of more games being published and a product of the heavier ones getting people very excited yeah. as well um, and, and kind of rising to the top of the consciousness. I think, as, as we said before, that, that, that bit of statistical work um, that was done about the, the metadata of Board Game Geek shows that the trend has been heavier, um, so the, the average heaviness of a game has gone up even despite the fact that there's more games published. So there are a lot of heavy games coming out. But yeah, there will be elegant, simple games out there. And there will be... Well, there are, because I know. Because Blue, Blue Lagoon, for example, right. that was published last year. Um, um, and there are simple kids' games. There's loads of great kids' games being published now. And all sorts of games all, all run the entire gamut. Um, but that's not what the question was about. <laughs> well, on that, I mean, clearly clearly your your zombie brain is becoming fatigued with such... It is, it is. ...such exertion, so... But, I, I mean, I, I don't know... I mean, there's gossip going around. And yes, me and Janine are now officially boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult as the sexes are separated as to where they can sleep and... When they can be seen together, but mm-hmm. we're going to sneak out into the moonlight, and we're going ah. to gently decapitate some of your brethren. So, well, that's not very nice. If you could, I was going to say, if if I could recommend a spot. Oh yeah, there's a there's a there's a particularly nice pine tree outside. Um, go like I don't know, three hundred meters away from the the, the yeah. camp uh, gates. Um, and they're, they're, it looks like there's lots of places to hide, but I'm sure there'll be no zombies hiding around, knowing that two people will be there copulating. And, I, we're not. Uh, and we're being dare you? We haven't got as far as copulating yet. Have no, we not? Holding hands and looking that's at not, the stars. You purist. That's not what it says on. The, <laughs> that's not what it says on the zombie Discord channel. Um, <laughs> You're telling me I should go out to. Get bit tree and have a night. Nice- get get bit tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I tell you what, I'll, I'll follow you to make sure you're safe. Okay. Um, uh, and and as long as you don't go over a a, 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 a kind of you know brisk trot, because um, otherwise I won't be able to keep up. Obviously, um, then I'll, I'll guard you, and there's no, I won't eat your brains at all. Well, then. fingers crossed. Yeah, I'll be back in here soon for a drink. Yes, it's been a pleasure. Indeed, yes. As, as, it, as it always is, Ben, talking to you. Now, if you want to get in a guild, first off, wipe that toxic blamange off your face, then go to the Board Game Geek Guild number 3209. Now, I reckon we need to shake up them rabid Elvis impersonators. So get out there... And make the jailhouse rock.